carbon from a lump of coal put under extreme pressure, high temperature, and hundreds of thousands of years, and what you get is a diamond. Inversely, if you want a diamond, since all life in this universe is made up of carbon, including us, carbon, water, and amino acids are the foundations of life, are the basis of life in this universe. To achieve greatness, to achieve our highest potential, to shine brightly, brilliantly, like a diamond, strong, beautiful, unstoppable, then we must go through pressure, heat, and passage of time. Passage of time means we have to be patient with the process of transformation, with the process of life. Pressure, extreme pressures at work, home, relationships, financial pressures, familial pressures, social pressures, work-related pressures. Temperature. Things do get heated up when we can't handle the heat. When it is too much, we can't manage too many things at the same time. We feel we're going to break apart. We feel like screaming or shouting or crying or don't even know how to handle the situation because the heat is on. Something good is cooking. We are broken to be remade. There is a very important quote by Marianne Williamson. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are we not? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. This is going to be a personal story now. <laughs> because telling a personal story can help reveal how we have held back our potential. My mother used to tell me that when I was a kid, and I vaguely remember this, this is obviously preschool, that I wanted to do things. And my mom would give me something to do. And I would do it rather quickly. And then I would come to her saying or asking her, Mommy ji, main hun ki kara. Mother, what shall I do now? She had things to do. And after a while, she would get fed up because how many tasks could she give me? without being interrupted. Not her fault, easily. <laughs> I think she was much more patient with me and loving and kind than perhaps I was with my own kids. And I would say I was very patient and kind with my kids. The point I'm trying to say is that I'm not talking bad about my mother. My mom used to say, Put ka put ho sagda, ma kumani ho sagdi. You can have a bad son, but you can never have a bad mother. And to not be a troublemaker, I sort of settled into coping mechanism. You may say that. How do I cope with slow speed? I would get bored if I had nothing to do. Reducing my potential and then dealing with boredom at the same time. That trend continued where I held back my true potential, throttling myself down so that I'm not a burden on other people, so that I don't cause any problem. At the same time, being afraid to be bored. Then again, dealing with coping mechanisms, turning to something to alleviate my boredom or to avoid situations 
which will lead to boredom. I don't want to go to this meeting. I don't want to go to this place because I don't want to be bored. At the same time, not fulfilling my true potential because I'm afraid to cause any trouble to other people. So I understand and accept the dilemma that I was in. I appreciate and honor the choices that I made, but I no longer need to continue to be on that path. I no longer have to follow that pattern because the times have changed. I no longer have to continue to put that ceiling in my life. I can grow. I can expand. I can be infinitely curious. It reminds me of the answer that Phyllis would give when people would ask her, Phyllis, how is it that you are at the ripe age of 90 or 100 year old and you're able to take care of yourself and you have more energy than most of us in this room less than half your age? Her answer was asking I C, what do you want me to do right now? And that's exactly what I asked my mother. I would finish my task very quickly, efficiently, then turn to my mother, who at that time was my high C, my God, my guru, my love, my mother. What do you want me to do, my divine mother, my high C?